Good afternoon and a very warm welcome. Welcome to those who are here in person and welcome to those who are joining us online. A particularly warm welcome to the singers of the choir Laudes, who have come, most of them from the Chester Wirral area, to sing this afternoon uh, and indeed this morning. Uh, we are very grateful for them and our own choir, who have extended their holiday by another weekend, uh, are particularly grateful in absentia. We're going to sing two hymns, and regulars will come to understand that this is going to be not an exception, but something of a rule uh, at Choral Evensong from now on. To balance the amount of singing done by the ones who will be behind me and the amounts done by the ones in front of me, we're going to have a processional hymn as well. Um, regular Abbey folk, if you haven't had the community news by email, please collect a paper copy from the West End on the way out. It is packed full of more activities, meetings, gatherings, events, than concerts, etc., than I could possibly uh, list at this point. So please take a copy and catch up with what's going on. So now, may I invite you to stand to find hymn number 880, and we're all going to sing Alleluia, Alleluia, hearts to heaven and voices raise.
Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. O Lord, open thou our lips. And the Lord shall show forth our grace. O God, make speed to help us. psalm set for this afternoon is Psalm 142. It is our custom to sit as the choir sings the psalm and to stand at the end for the Gloria. Psalm 142, you can follow the words on page 305 of the prayer book.
A reading from the book Deuteronomy. Moses is giving the Israelites the word of the Lord. Chapter 7, beginning at verse 7. It was not because you were more numerous than any other people that the Lord set his heart on you and chose you, for you were the fewest of all peoples. It was because the Lord loved you and kept the oath that he swore to your ancestors that the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know, therefore, that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God, who maintains covenant loyalty with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations and who repays in their own person those who reject him. He does not delay, but repays in their own person those who reject him. Therefore, observe diligently the commandment, the statutes, and the ordinances that I am commanding you today. If you heed these ordinances by diligently observing them, the Lord your God will maintain with you the covenant loyalty that he swore to your ancestors. He will love you, bless you, and multiply you. He will bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your ground, your grain and your wine and your oil, the increase of your cattle and the issue of your flock in the land that he swore to your ancestors to give you. There ends the first lesson.
A reading from the Revelation to St. John, chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your toil, and your patient endurance. I know that you cannot tolerate evildoers. You have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them to be false. I also know that you are enduring patiently and bearing up for the sake of my name, and that you have not grown weary. But I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember then from what you have fallen. Repent and do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Yet this is to your credit. You hate the works of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. To everyone who conquers, I will give permission to eat from the tree of life that is in the paradise of God. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, these are the words of the first and the last who was dead and came to life. I know your affliction and your poverty, even though you are rich. I know the slander on the part of those who say that they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Beware, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison so that you may be tested, and for ten days you will have affliction. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Whoever conquers will not be harmed by the second death. Here ends the second lesson.
we declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, using the words of the Apostles' Creed and saying together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <coughs> the Lord be with Sacrifice for sin and also an ensemble of godly life. Give us grace that we may always most thankfully receive that his most inestimable benefit, and also daily endeavor ourselves to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desire, all good counsel, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both 
our hearts may be said to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Light in our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. George Herbert's joyful poem, Let All the World in Every Corner Sing, has been set to music by several composers. And the setting that we shall hear now is by Kenneth Layton. Layton was born in Wakefield in Yorkshire in 1929. And it was his time as a chorister in Wakefield Cathedral that set him on the road to becoming a composer, a pianist, and an academic musician. Leighton wrote this anthem in 1965.
And now let us pray. In sorrow for the cruelty, violence, and suffering that human beings continue to inflict on each other, we pray to the God who demands from us that we act with justice, with mercy, and humility. Loving Father of all the human race, whose Son blessed his disciples with the gift of peace, Forgive the selfishness, greed, and arrogance that cause us to be at enmity with one another. Take from us the bitterness, the envy, and the hatred that freeze our hearts and stunt our compassion, and make us the instruments of your peace in our homes, in the communities where we live and work, in our country and across the world, in Palestine, Ukraine, Yemen, Sudan, and everywhere where there is conflict, violence, and brutality. This we pray for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We pray, or pray also for the sick and the suffering. Eternal God, whose Son Jesus Christ bore our griefs and carried our sorrows, and still comes to us in the guise of the needy, hear us as we pray for those in any kind of distress, the hungry, the homeless, and the refugee, the sick in body or mind, those whose lives are drawing to a close and those who mourn, the lonely and those living in fear or hopelessness. Help us, O Lord, who offer these prayers to perceive the suffering of others and to turn aside to help them. And so, by your grace, to become the agents of your transforming love, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. And finally, let us pray for ourselves and for each other, as we say together the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen. Let all the world in every corner sing, and that includes you. So please stand. Find hymn number 81. At the Lamb's High Feast, we sing praise to our victorious King. Hymn 81.
And now may the Lord bless us and watch over us. May the Lord make his face shine on us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen.